now I'm really, really happy. I'm joined in the studio by uh, Hooglega Dachson. Hey. And York Underwood. Hello. You were usually our grapevine guy. Yeah, well, yeah, I've done it <laughs> twice. Yeah, well, that's good. That's, that's it. Usual. You're stuck. Yeah, good. I like that attitude. <laughs> it's like getting on, engaged on your second date. Right, yeah, <laughs> it's forever now. It's done. But you're also uh, really active in the stand-up comedy community, which is what we're here to talk about. Yeah, I'm probably the biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> he's everywhere. He's, he's like a stalker, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think people are starting to be like, yeah, it was cool. I saw you a lot. Now I'm seeing you too much. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> you're, you're everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you're at the grocery store again. Yeah, I know. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, I, I, last time you were here when we were doing Grapevine, um, I, I was just surprised to know there's such a stand-up yeah. scene here. I've lived here for so long, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So there must be other idiots like me. Yeah, I, but, well, yeah, sure? but I, I, you're like I, at the forefront of this. Um, well, I, I don't know about that, but I know a lot of my personal friends don't even know that I do stand up. Uh, really? Big, uh, or they they kind of pretend not to know. I think <laughs> I think that you know people uh, are afraid. To, some people are afraid to go to stand up shows because they're afraid they'll get embarrassed. You know, because if the uh, if the comedian isn't funny, you get embarrassed for the, for them, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that embarrassment turns into anger, which will be then directed <laughs> towards the comedian. It's a vicious circle. That's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, so uh, that's part of what's uh, <clears throat> fun and scary about being a, a stand-up comedian it's uh, you're you're here to make the audience feel good but you might it's there's a chance sometimes a very big chance that you will make them feel very embarrassed people <laughs> don't like to feel embarrassed then the hate will come <laughs> have, <laughs> have you experienced this i have experienced it uh, once uh, it was in uh, grindavik uh, and the uh, thing was, uh, I wasn't supposed to do stand-up there. I just kind of went spontaneously up on stage, and uh, <laughs> half of the people didn't understand uh, Icelandic, and the rest of them were only there to drink. Yeah. Well, all of them were over there to drink. Yeah, It's not a good combo, like drunks and stand-up comedy. Well, the, yeah. Well, it can it be. It can be, yeah. if they love you. I, I was, I, what I'm always <laughs> amazed about is like why people think it's okay to talk back to comics or heckle, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't do that to other performing artists. You wouldn't go to see a dance show and just start, you know, yeah. screaming out, you suck. <laughs> yeah, well, there is a, uh, th uh, there is uh, this uh, misconception that uh, comedians love when you heckle. We don't, <laughs> we hate it. <laughs> and we don't really, we really don't want you to interrupt. But if you will, we will use the only skill we have, which is comedy against the heckler. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, it's it's sometimes I have a few like a uh, uh, heckler jokes in my mind ready for whenever it happens. But Icelandic audiences are more like uh, mm -hmm. polite. They're very polite, really yeah. respectful. Yeah. yeah, there's not like if you go to shows, they don't like unless it's a particularly bad situation. You don't see people don't go there expecting to heckle. They treat it kind of like a theater show. Right. And and uh, as I, we were talking a little bit before we went on the air, I, I think people have so much respect for anyone who gets up there and tries that. It's the scariest thing you can do, really. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, partly I do it because it's scary, because it's a, you know, it's a great way to evolve as a person to do stuff that scares you. And this is always very scary, even when it's, uh, when it's a really good crowd, even when it's, you, you know they're there to see you, to laugh at you. It's scary anyway, because it's just a, such an insane thing to do, <laughs> to step out, up on stage and be funny. And you have to be funny instantly because... The silence that comes after a, a, a bad joke, a <laughs> joke that doesn't work, it's, it's, uh, it cuts your, ear, your ears will bleed. It's just screaming oh. silence. Oh, my God. Do you, do you find in a strange way, like when it gets really bad, that it almost becomes interesting, like performance art at that it's point? The, yeah, I think <laughs> you can cope with it. It's a, like a, a ha you have to embrace it. I think yeah. uh, that's the coping <laughs> mechanism. And also... The one thing, one time when it really didn't work for me, it is really the best thing that can happen. It has to happen for every comedian. Yeah. You have to bomb because that's the only way to realize that bombing is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and also like if say you're say you're a funny person uh, on stage, even not just around your friends. If you don't have that experience of realizing, yes, this takes work, you'll always just be kind of funny on stage and never right. get better. And right. so you need to have like 
everything taken from you in order for you to go, okay, maybe I need to put some work into this. Well, it is a craft. I mean, yeah. an extremely, uh, I, would, I would imagine like- uh, It's a weird craft. Yeah, but I mean, as you say, there's not a lot of room for fat there. No, do you know I, what I mean? You, you really have to be down. efficient and 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 sort of uh, cutthroat about. If you what do you're it, doing. like if you break it up in your head, you have to have about eight to twelve laughs a minute. Wow! So you're looking at like every six to seven seconds, the crowd has to be laughing, or it's going to start to feel like dead. I never thought about it that mathematically. <laughs> no, no, you, you just made it more yeah, scary. You just, <laughs> 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 no, you like, just I, I never. I actually because like, I, I never thought of it before. Either when I was doing it in Canada, because I would just go and do shows and you'd try and be funny and you'd know how to do references and you know where you were. But when I came here, I realized like I have no point of reference. My jokes don't translate at all, a lot of them at all. And so you realized how regional you really were. Mm -hmm. And then you and then I don't understand Icelandic. So I was like watching the show and like you watch like Hulager and you're watching him and he's doing really well. And I'm like, what is he? I want to know what he's saying. And then you start to like notice things like, yeah, he's getting laughs every couple of seconds. It's really the energy's building up and you notice all these other parts of the craft that you didn't notice when you were doing it in your native language. Right. And so it was just, yeah, it's, it's scary. But when you start timing it, it is like, it's a real thing. It's laughs per minute. Wow. Decides how the audience energy builds up and your body language, the way you use a mic, the way your voice sounds. Yeah, no. I think a lot of people think, you know, I'm really funny, and all my friends tell me I'm hilarious. And then yeah. when you start to talk about, well, can you be funny eight times a minute? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. I think yeah. I just did something in my drawers. Oh, yeah. People <laughs> always mix up charming and funny. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, my friend, he's really funny. I'm like, no, he's kind of good looking. That's about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, oddly enough, is, is, is kind of weird for a stand up comic. You yeah. don't see a lot of fantastic looking stand ups. No. Yeah, well, if they're takes fantastic the shine off. looking, you start kind of to resent them before. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This better be good. If I see yeah. a guy with like pecs and like abs and arms going on stage and be like, oh, I'm like, no, I'm not going to laugh no. just out of spite. Yeah. No, he comedy. doesn't get this. No. This is where he, I. He gets this is too many I freebies should. every day. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. need my laugh. Comedy watch, is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has to be. You have to be. It has to be. A, you have to have a fire in you. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, like in the movie Funny People, when he said, like, the reason we were funny in our generation is because our dad's coming at you with a stick. Right. It's kind of like that with like comedy on stage. Like, you want the attention, you've had to learn how to earn it. Whereas if you've always got attention, you're kind of like, why isn't everyone laughing? I've All always right. been I've always been funny and smart before. <laughs> I I used to, I have this one trick which I I started using like a couple of years ago. I do it all the time. I, it's just I. I come up on stage smiling and I try to just smile through all of it. Oh, yeah. It, it looks like I'm having a really good time <laughs> and I don't have a care in the world. <laughs> and it, you know, I, you know, that, that's, uh, and pe people kind of, if you smile at them, they will smile back. So it's, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's because you trick. smile the whole time, they think you're special. And yeah. It would be yeah, they're helping. Yeah. To you. And also, yeah, they think I might, might be like a mentally challenged <laughs> and, <laughs> and makes a very interesting contrast to all the pornographic jokes that right, I'm saying. Right. <laughs> oh, like, oh, it's so sweet. Oh. He has feelings <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I should backtrack for a second. I should have started in the beginning by, by uh, for people who don't know, which is everyone out, uh, you know, not in this country, that you're, you are a cartoonist as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how I started. And that's how kind of I got into stand-up comedy. I always, I always loved stand-up comedy, but uh, there was, a, until like uh, five years ago, I thought there's no way in hell that I'm ever going to step up on stage and do that. But uh, uh, Are, my cousin, who is one of the people who started this new, like, a boom of... Um, uh, new generation of stand-up comedy here in Iceland, he told me that I, sh I should try it out and he pointed out that I would probably get away with things that other comedians wouldn't because I already have recognition for my cartoons which are very filthy and very dark. Mm -hmm. So I can use that darkness and put it into stand-up comedy. Would you say that your stand-up act is similar to the tone of the cartoons? It is, but I think the cartoons are uh, more like sinister, mm -hmm. uh, more uh, evil, because <laughs> uh, there is you you because there is a distance. It's it's not your face on the cartoons. My cartoons are stick figures, and I can make like the stick figures say anything. But when I'm on stage, it's my it's my face. It's right. my body up there right. that are saying these things. So I kind of have to have a different approach. Uh, hence the smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, and your, your cartoons, some of them are, are sort of, um, it's, it's not necessarily you're just going to laugh out loud when you read it. There's, there can be a moment of uh, thinking about it, and then it kind of lands. 
Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I like th- those one the best. Uh, I like uh, and also uh, there is like a uh, a version of that in the stand up where there it's a kind of a thinker or it's disgusting uh, when it hits you, but then you laugh and that's my favorite laugh when I say something and people go oh oh and then they start laughing. <laughs> right, right. That's kind of you, you manage to kind of hurt them but still they like you yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's like an abusive relationship <laughs> <laughs> you know you should be leaving but you don't yeah. Yeah. you just keep coming back you guys had a big show at Huda like uh, oh I wasn't on that ago. one you weren't on that no no okay. I was on uh, he let me on the first time and then this one was uh, but, like some new people and then him at the end again okay. it was really good they had Gunnar Hansen Ragnar Hansen Nadia Samachat yeah, uh, <laughs> I just call her Nadia. And, uh, uh, and Saga Garras. Yeah. And uh, Andre Iverson. Andre, yes. Yeah. I didn't know Gunnar Hansen was doing stand up. No, it's, he's recently doing it. He, he's always been like a, the closest thing he's gotten to it before this is like this character, uh, Freeman. Yeah, right. Uh, and yeah. now he's uh, going as himself, and he like. He has told me like it's way scarier going as yourself up there because mm-hmm. if you're a character, people can just, you know, you can hide behind the character, but you're more naked when you're up there yourself. I mean, for me, it's got to be the scariest thing. And I, I come from an acting background, but I often say to people, I can be on stage in front of a thousand people as somebody else. That's no problem. Right. But if you ask me to make a speech at your wedding, I start to sweat. Yeah. <laughs> well, start a, to get nervous. It's a psychological difference. That's what also I think why people heckle or feel they can. Because there is no distance. Like when you're playing a different character, they're like, that's like, I'm yelling at something that isn't real. Right. right they feel yeah. like an idiot. Right. But if they feel like, oh, no, this is him. He really thinks this. I can I can interact with him. He's a person. Mm-hmm. And then they get confused and they yell. And yeah, it's like a, it's a psychological distance thing where it, because you kind of break it and you're almost like conversational to them, they feel they can like overstep their boundaries. But uh, on the other side of it, it's got to be like a drug. Yeah, when you, when you get those laughs up there, even, you know, you go through the hard times. I mean, I bet you just can't wait to get back up there. Yeah, uh, the first time I did it, uh, uh, it was far from being my best show, but it, the, the reaction was positive enough for me to think it was the greatest thing I ever did, ever. <laughs> so really? so you just, didn't bomb first time? No, I didn't. I was lucky that way, I guess. Hmm. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, and uh, I even the f- like the first set I did, I I never repeated uh, like mm-hmm. I didn't repeat seventy percent of that joke those jokes again, but it went you know just for those jokes that uh, people laughed at. It was just I realized okay I'm gonna do this again and again and again. Yeah, wow. and you were saying before, didn't you, that when you first tried it in in uh, Canada, mm-hmm. you had a really successful show. Yeah, well I, I wrote like I wanted I was teaching physics <laughs> at the as a sessional lecturer and I was like I don't like this I want to do stand up and then I wrote this set and went to a club and did it like this little set and it went well but I didn't I didn't even listen to the audience like all the stuff that I know to do now I just like practice it so many times in the mirror that I basically did like a play on stage of me and then I uh, I went to a bar and told them I was a comedian because I, I lied and started my own weekly show and so I was just like, I'm a comedian from a different part of Canada. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can have a weekly show. And wow. I just invited real comedians on stage to sandwich me in there so I looked good. Wow. <laughs> that's that's, that's incredible. <laughs> but are there some shows coming up here in Reykjavik in the near future? Uh, yeah. So there's, uh, there's like a lot of like the open mic shows are still kind of growing uh, around. So the, I believe after the Easter weekend, there's a show in Bar 11 on the Thursday. Uh, at night, so hmm. those are like those are those are open kind of like best of open mics. Those are really new people. Some some people have done it a few times, but it's a really interesting kind of scene because since I got here in December, the numbers of people going to the show went from like twenty to like about eighty. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, the, so the basement is like filling up, but they actually had uh, last last week when they had the show. The same time we had the student seller show, they had a, a heckler full-on drunk heckler situation and had to kick people out. And I'm like, oh, oh. now that the scene's exploding, it's going to start yeah, happening. Yeah, the heckers are, yeah. 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 are coming. They're here to get you. They're uh, like wannabe stand-ups, but they don't have the courage to get up there. Yeah. I think, I don't know. But well, yeah, because it's like, that's the other thing, because I've, I've traveled to a lot of small towns uh, doing stand-up, especially within Canada, and that's because like, stand-up is a, like a ego thing, but it's also like kind of a erotic thing. 
like that you're asserting yourself as being the funny guy, which is usually how you get a, like people attracted to you. So you walk into a small town and you're like, go to their only bar, and you're like, I'm the funniest one in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then there's the take your life in your hands. <laughs> that's how hecklers are born. They are yeah. the, like uh, the the uh, who once were like an alpha male in yeah. high school. And yeah, like, exactly. No, you are not funny. Yeah. I am the greatest. I mean, there's a bullying aspect to heckling for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just the problem is is they don't really get to be a bully and it drive that's why they get worse and worse because right. they want to be and then they're like no no I'm actually really good at this yeah. and then they look stupider and stupider oh, and man. they just like their whole life crumbles. <laughs> yeah, it always helps that you have a mi- microphone and they don't. Oh yeah, so that's yeah. For sure. yeah. And you're on the stage and you were saying that the grapevine is coming out with a whole stand-up issue. Uh, yeah, well it's the the cover feature. Uh, I'm really story. I think it's a really great story because I wrote it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I've been working on it for about two months, and uh, I've been following comedians around and uh, interviewing them and getting their story. And like, I wanted to find out how this kind of happened, because as an, for someone from somewhere else, you kind of hear that like Yonar was the mayor of Reykjavik, and he's a comedian. And so I thought there must be like a, like a lot of comedians if they have like a surplus, so some of them work in public life. That's funny. And so, but you found out that it was kind of a one-man show actor type thing, and then the real kind of stand-up scene started in about... 2009, and how it started was um, Haldor Laxness's grandson. Uh, owed, oh yeah, I've seen him do yeah, stand-up. He yeah. owed money at a bar, so he owed money at Pricketh downtown, and he was going to pay it off by doing stand-up. And then he did a show, and then the next show, Ari and Yoi and wow. Borker were on the show, and then they formed Mid Iceland. <laughs> so Ari performed in the spring of 2009, and he was a full-time professional comedian by January 2010. It's the wow. most Icelandic That's thing I've ever heard. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it started because somebody owed money in a bar. for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had, he had a big bar tab at Pricket, and he had to pay it off. He's like, well, if you do a show every two weeks for a few months, I'll consider it even. That's funny. <laughs> oh, it's it's such an interesting... Born kind of, out of necessity. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like the whole the whole scene and then there's uh but before that there was kind of a scene that was starting because of like the corporate bookings oh sorry <laughs> the corporate no, we're bo- adjusting your microphone there thank yeah. you <laughs> uh, the corporate bookings and things that were going on so at parties they were wanting to get more kind of stand-up people and so there was uh, right. like uh, someone that Huliger works with Anna Fava she was doing like a one-woman show that kind of morphed into doing stand-up into working every single weekend uh, for three years straight wow so it's just a, it's a really kind of this scene started all around 2008, 2009, and then it just escalated really fast to the point where people are talking about being like burnt out and stuff. But really? They've been doing it for like two years. <laughs> I can imagine. I went to a birthday party a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a really elaborate affair, and it was in uh, Silvertunglith. Which is the right, old yeah. Bio. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was a big, big room, and and this guy rolls up there, and it's like it looks like he's going to do stand up, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh man. You know, it's like a birthday party. This is going to be bad. Yeah. And man, in about a minute, he had that whole room in the palm of his hand. He was hilarious. Yeah. And I thought, like, wow, like respect, you know. Yeah. And I had the, the the little feeling like something's going on here that I don't know about. Yeah. Think, he was too professional yeah. about it. It was. I think you know. I think uh, like you were saying about uh, the comedy club that uh, the p- there are more and more people are yeah. coming to. Li- I think there's just an interest in it. It's just really growing mm-hmm. these days, and I've been getting more gigs than ever these days. So well, mm-hmm. this is also um, from my point of view, and you can tell me, York, if you agree. Uh, there's humor is a big part of Icelandic culture. Like, yeah, well, it's uh, to me, it's always like the more you find it, the more funny like everything kind of is here. They don't really let you know right away if you're from somewhere else that they're kind of always making fun of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Because like I remember like the you know like this is an overused example, but I just got here and then I would meet people and like I was out at the bar or something and they'd be like, oh, so how do you like Iceland? And I was like, oh, well, you know, I think this is really cool and this is interesting. And then like by the third night, I'm like, oh, they're making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, so. what do you think uh, about um, b- being an outsider and doing the trying to you know get into a culture with humor, and uh, also a culture we were talking about before? It's a it's a very um, it's a it's a kind of small yeah, world here. It's mm-hmm. it's yeah, interesting I mean, because I've heard a lot of people say that they find it difficult 
to get involved in things, and some people say they really like it. I found that if I just show up all the time, they eventually just accept me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you just while like, they're making fun. Well, of yeah. That's okay. like as long as you're they show that you show you have an interest and you want to do it. Eventually, they're like, okay, he wants to do it, whatever. Because yeah, yeah. right. at first they're like, why is he here? What does he want? What is he trying to take from <laughs> us? <laughs> but what do you um, you know, Hugli? I I often. For people who aren't in Iceland and don't know how tight the community is here and how small it is, you always run into people you know. And I always have the feeling, uh, like the reason people don't say hi frequently on the street is if you said hi to everybody, you'd never get anywhere. That's absolutely true. So you just, yeah. you know, just nod I, and go about your business. Also, you know, it's, uh, I had, I actually joked about this. I had this one bit about this in my stand up. It's, uh, it's come to, I live on Lögaveir, which is the busiest street in Iceland. So I'm constantly seeing people and it's gotten to the point where I don't know if I actually know those people or I've just see, seen them repeatedly <laughs> right. on the street. <laughs> So I kind of just always look down and don't say hi to anyone. So I'm really rude when I'm out there, you know. And I, and it o- o- often comes to the uh, the uh, embarrassing moment where you say hi to someone and you don't know them, or somebody says hi to you, and you have to make this conversation while you're kind of trying to figure it out, figure out who it is. And <laughs> I hate it when people go uh, when I go like, "Hi, remember me?" and I go, "Yes." lying <laughs> and, and then they go who am I and I go oh, screw you I don't Treat want me. to be your friend anyway <laughs> give me a few minutes yeah. <laughs> if you don't remember I'm not going to talk yeah about yeah it. yeah who am I well I'll wait till you talk some more and I'll figure out what yeah, it was God, I, I love that fishing for information moment when, <laughs> when you're just like uh, hey yeah. how you been and they say yeah. good and you're like and what are you up to? Yeah. Like, same old. And you're like, <laughs> which is? <laughs> like, give me something, man. Yeah. What is it again that you Tiny do? Tiny bit of information. You, but, oh, it's yes. Yeah. Oh, so nice to see you again. <laughs> and you know everything How's about that. How's the them. leg? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, it's funny because stand-up actually makes it weird as well because it's so tight-knit. So if you tell a joke on stage, I've had this happen. Uh, where I've told something on stage or said something on stage and then I've met someone and they knew it because they were there or someone had said it. Uh-huh. And because I am like the English speaking one on the show, they're like, yeah, you're the tall weird one who said this. And then I'm like, oh, do I know you? And they're like, no, but I know all about your relationship and your family. Wow. <laughs> that's great. And that's going to spread like wildfire. Oh, yeah. Right? No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone I had know. relationship yeah. issues and everyone seemed to know about it before, before I did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So is there something coming up specifically that we know about we can tell people to go see, or should they just I'm going. In? I'm going to Isafjörður this Easter uh, in, uh, in the Aldri Fóri Suður Festival. Yeah. I will be performing there with Saga Gardas, who is very funny as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think I will be performing next, well, it's Tuesday today. Yeah. Okay, and the Wednesday next week, I think I'll be performing at Skula, uh, Skula Bar, which is uh, by Skula Tork. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah, I have I have stuff, but I don't remember what it was. Okay. Well, if you if you watch the listings on the grapevine, like the they're going to be advertising as well because the Hura show is going to be coming up near the end of the month. Uh, there's going to be another student seller show as well. That's going to be more. It's just the starting of the month. There's always like a break. Mm-hmm. It seems like for a few days, and then right. it starts always after the, about the ninth, and then there's shows, and then two or three shows, yeah. and there's going to be a show at I think Fredrickson again in the middle of the month. They have a monthly show wow. there across from Huda, but yeah, there's a lot. Of, if you look, there's a lot of shows everywhere, and there's actually if anyone's wanting to try stand up, um, Huda is having a Sunday night open mic where you can do storytelling, poetry, music, or stand up. So it takes a little bit of the pressure off because. Uh, you can just try it in front of people who absolutely don't care if you succeed or fail. <laughs> you make it, it's, it's like so easy to enter into this. I just took a deep breath, like I'm running out of excuses. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man. Yeah. Is that just one event or is it going to be like a regular that's w- Sunday weekly, thing? every Sunday. Yeah. Every Sunday. Yeah, every wow, Sunday. that's phenomenal. Yeah. Are you coming on Friday for Reykjavik? I mean, for Grapevine Hour? Uh, I don't... Uh, Yes. Come on, I'm going to be here. Okay, I'll come. Yeah. Don't send me somebody's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> send me somebody funny. Those are my funny. coworkers. If they're, <laughs> yeah. if they're listening, you're... No, but you set a high bar, man. It's it, Last time we did it, it was really fun. Oh, yeah. No, I'll uh, I'll come back. It'll be good. I'll have I'll more, more prepared. Ah, you're, you're, yeah. It's great. Yeah. But um, we'll just keep like... Um, 
communicating and you let me know when things are coming up and I'll just yeah, that's what throw I'm, it out there. I'm trying to get, because one of the issues I found is that people are worried about going to stand up when it's not in English. And so it seems like it's only for Icelandic people. And I'm trying to get that to stop, even though it doesn't make sense. But it works because you, you experience something kind of different and you see something and then you start to notice things that make you laugh. Mm -hmm. And then you feel like you're part of something rather than going to see like a show in English in Iceland. You kind of feel right. like you're always at a resort. Right. Because you're like, oh, yeah, it, this is all about Iceland. Yeah, I found that the uh, people have told me that uh, they use my cartoon sometimes to learn Icelandic. So you might as well oh. go to a stand up show, you know. Yeah. You That's try to find out any fun way of, of kind of getting to know the thing. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's also the kind of thing if you, you know, you can. It's not like you have to wait for the intermission or the, yeah. You know what I mean. You can. It's a lot freer yeah. kind of vibe. You know? yeah, yeah. And you're in a bar. Yeah. You're in a bar. Drinks there. Yeah. And you can you pick up phrases and things like that and words. Like I I don't know. I listen to people like on because I'm trying to learn the language, but I'm it's going very slowly. Um, and you can. Just You've been here since November or something. December. December. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's the worst. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's like it's just I don't know. I found it. I found that when you become a more active audience member, something you take for granted when you're in your own language, you start to really appreciate things a lot yeah, more. And I so agree it's a with cool you. experience. Well, uh, we we see you from time to time, and I'm always glad you come in. Uh, but I'm really happy to have you here. Hubeck. Nice to be here. It's so nice of you to stop by. Will you come again sometime? Absolutely. All right, we'll do this. Uh, yeah, once in a while. Yeah, be great. It's really fun for me. Um, if you have any questions, listeners, about what's going on in the world of stand-up, you can always drop us uh, a line on our Facebook page or send us a tweet, and I will make sure you get all the information you need. And Hooligers books are available on Amazon. Oh, good call. <laughs> <laughs> and on Daxon.com. Yeah. How many books do you have now? Uh, in Icelandic, uh, around 30, but in English, 30? yeah. Uh, Prolific. Who? Wow. Some of them are not that great, uh, and then but uh, all of my English translations are awesome, and yeah. they are around maybe six or wow. seven. Yeah, these are um, at least for those of us living here in Iceland. These are like always turn up like for Christmas and birthdays, and yeah, it's like you get the Hugleg book. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's they, awesome. I just when I, I bought one right before I left the first time I was in Iceland, and I was like, my pussy is hungry. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the title of the book. He was not just saying. <laughs> oh, that was good. Wasn't just saying. No, I was going to say, it, was hungry. It, is it Tuesday already? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. What a perfect exit line. <laughs> uh, you're listening to 89.1 Radio 